नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू ओडिशा जर्नी नमस्कार सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू एपिसोड दैट कवर्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एसेंशियल एलिमेंट्स ऑफ ह्यूमन काइंड और मैन काइंड दैट इज फूड यू नो एज दे से द वे थ्रू अ मैंस हार्ट इज थ्रू हिज स्टमक सो इट इज द फूड दैट बाइंड्स एंड कनेक्ट्स पीपल एंड कल्चर फूड transcends beyond the cultural boundaries and you know the religious and regional barriers so let me share a food trivia the whole concept of uh, cheese that is the cuddling of milk to form other essential uh, nutritious uh, nutritious and protein food like paneer and cheese is believed to have brought in by the portuguese in the 15th 16th century However, don't we all know that the popular rasgulla of Odisha or the Khira Mohan has been offered to Lord Jagannath from time immemorial? Now, let me invite uh, Jitu sir to share some of his, uh, you know, uh, food stories. He is a well-known traveler, is an author and an archaeologist, so I'm sure he would have some interesting stories. What do you think, sir? Thank you, Rosalind. Uh, uh, yeah, what Rosalind told that food. has played a very important role in the evolution of human culture evolution of human kind it has shaped empires it has shaped uh, our trading uh, empires across oceans across continents and many of the foods what we today take for granted you know it could be black pepper it could be uh, nutmegs or it could be any things uh, even turmeric so we take them for granted because they are easily available they are easily accessible but each of them has a unique story and uh, and through this uh, episodes we are trying to uncover you know uh, these stories associated with food so this is my book uh, called paper and tides which just got released and this is about portuguese and malabar in kerala connections based on the black paper tide uh, sorry black paper trade so uh of course i'll talk about this in a different episode but uh, let me tell you about uh, when the portuguese came to india in the 16th century after the discovery you know the sea route discovered by vasco da gama and lot of changes happened india witnessed a cultural kind of evolutions associated with food of course there were dark sides as well but we are not going to talk about the dark side so uh one of the greatest contributions made by the portuguese is the tomato which we take it for granted you go to any village in the country whether it is in northeast or it is in odisha or it is in maharashtra or it is in down south everywhere every kitchen cannot be thought about you know whether poor rich um super rich everywhere you find tomato has become an essential part of the culinary heritage of india so let me tell you about tomato so 2 3 years back when i made a visit to bandagati it was part of a project initiated by the tribal ministry of government of odisha i went and i tried to document a food uh unique to banda culture called dakma i don't think so anybody would have heard about it in odisha at least dakma um, what is the uniqueness it, i was like you know transported back to the prehistoric era where similar kind of foods were produced so in dakma what they make they it's a it's a smoke dry fish uh stew what i would say not curry what they do uh in the traditional way they use tamarind and uh, dry smoke fish which they get from the uh, weekly markets which is held around bandagati you know different villages of bandagati and then uh, they use also the starch of the rice so this is there is no other spice added and no oil is used so this is a local uh, food the bonda which is supposed to be it's bonda sare pbg tribe and they were very they were they had remained completely isolated until very recent times of course few academicians uh, you know studied their culture and all but to common person they were completely hidden and they they had been eating this food from time immemorial but what surprised me that today tamarind is not used instead they use cherry tomatoes which they grow in their village kitchen in their uh, you know house kitchens and that was a surprise for me how a tomato which was an alien uh, you know fruit 
uh, introduced by the British. Rosalind will talk about it. And we have come up also as a very uh, 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 small booklet, uh, you know, on tomatoes journey from, uh, you know, Portu uh, from from uh, 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 from the new world that is in Southern America to Goa and then to the Bondakati. So let uh, uh, Rosalind talk about it. So I will take you through a fiction, a story. Now imagine India in the 16th century. That was the time when Portuguese settlers had come down and made Goa their new home. During one of such expeditions, a missionary, a Christian missionary uh, by name, let's say, uh, Father Emmanuel. So he had traveled and he had made Goa his second home. During one of his expeditions to travel to the southern part of America, he discovered a fruit which was red and juicy and tasted tangy. That was called tomato or the tomato. It was attractive and it definitely added color and richness to the food that he relished there. And suddenly, Father Emmanuel could recollect that it tasted similar to what he had had in Goa that added to the sourness of the food and that was tamarind. So, he thought he would pick up the seeds and probably introduce them in the tropical climate of India, especially in Goa and let's see if the fruit, the rich fruit tomato could be grown and cultivated. So, when back in India, in Goa, he introduced the seeds of the tomato fruit to the local people. It flourished, you know, the climate was uh, so good for uh, the cultivation of tomatoes that tomatoes just flourished. They were red, they were succulent and vibrant. But this was an alien fruit which the locals did not like. They thought it may be poisonous and red appeared to be forbidden. People did not like it and it was not accepted. That actually heart broke Manuel's, Father Emmanuel's uh, emotions. Thankfully, one local farmer, a local man from Goa, let's call him Afonso, he took up the idea, he cultivated tomatoes and once on an experiment basis, he made a stew out of it. But he did not restrict to only usage of tomatoes. He also added onions and local spices along with the traditional item that was used for bringing in the sourness, which was kokum and tamarind. So mixed together, he made a very spicy uh, soup and he introduced that and offered that to his friends and family and everyone loved it. So tomato was no more poisonous, no more forbidden and people started accepting. So a foreign fruit which was also regarded as a bilati begun or a foreign eggplant started getting accepted and as the you know, trade route followed, from the coast, west coast of Goa to Malabar and further, you know, getting into the eastern side and also getting into the mainland or inland of India, everybody started using tomato. They did not immediately replace, but we see that slowly tomato started get, finding its own, you know, uh, usage in the Indian households and kitchens. So much so that even the traditional sambars and rasams started you know, uh, getting tomato being introduced rather than tamarind paste. And from Dakma, the story that we hear, a remote village, uh, you know, a, 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 a delicacy which is prepared by the indigenous people in the remote village in Orissa has found tomato being grown in the kitchen garden. Isn't that amazing? So when yes. we talk about food, it is not dividing, it unites people. And when we talk about India as a country, India as an idea, we are actually a melting pot of various cultures and regions. Right. Isn't it? Yeah. So it's amazing to see that, you know, how India unites culture, unites region and unites people. One concept which was seen as a poisonous fruit right. started becoming, uh, you know, uh, getting used in remote villages and places and now I think we cannot imagine our lives without tomato. Yeah. The color, the creamy texture, the flavor, 
you know from rasam sambar to uh, kadai paneer to any dish that we can imagine today even the orissa households when we you know prepare satvik uh, uh, bhojan at home tomato khatta is an absolute essential right, isn't it right so it's amazing to see how ideas evolve and flourish and make the world the great place that we live and in. we are all part of a shared heritage so it not uh, like we should not claim ourselves that we have better culture and they have lesser culture you know and we are all part of and this is the ideas you know how that has shaped our uh, our uh, race humanity race the race of humanity so that is more important and on unfortunately these stories these ideas are not taught in schools in indian schools we give a lot of importance to the political history uh, we give lot of importance to religious history we give lot of importance to you know art and architectures but we what we you know experience in our daily life those ideas are never part of our curriculum i think this is how we should change we have to have a new uh, perspective and fortunately with the use of technology like uh, you know artificial intelligence or 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 any kind of design tools or uh, networking tools i think we will be able to create much more such rich content and that will bring a transformation the way school education is happening and also the travelers who come to odisha or who come who go to anywhere in the country they get a different kind of experience and that is completely resonating so this is what we had to say we'll come up with another episode uh, till uh, then uh, we have to take a Uh, no so wait for our new episode new, and yes. we'll be coming up with still more sure, new sure, stories sure, sure. thank you so much thank namaskar. you sir namaste